Hello, and welcome to the virtual companion series for the African Methodist Episcopal Church, A History by Dr. Dennis C. Dickerson. In this video, I will be discussing chapter six, Freedom Now, Civil Rights, Black Power, and Anti-Colonial Insurgencies, 1945 to 1976. I am Dr. Christina Dickerson Cousin, and I will be providing historical context to help guide your understanding of Chapter 6. I will be discussing three main topics, the Civil Rights Movement, the Black Power Movement, and decolonization. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, African Americans continued to advocate for their rights as American citizens. This involved them fighting to dismantle Jim Crow segregation in the South and to secure their voting rights. Their collective efforts during this time period are known as the Civil Rights Movement. There are several significant organizations that played important roles in the Civil Rights Movement. They include the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, and the Congress of Racial Equality. Throughout the Civil Rights Movement, activists use nonviolence to further their aims. This included participating in marches, sit-ins, boycotts, and other peaceful protests. Reverend James M. Lawson Jr., for example, taught national student activists how to engage in passive resistance. This map depicts some of the significant events in the civil rights movement. So you can see them occurring throughout the 1950s and 1960s, throughout the South and in other regions of the country as well. During the civil rights movement, black parents advocated for school integration through the court system. They wanted their children to have access to the highest quality education possible, and they felt that integration was the key to making that happen. Joseph Armstrong Delane, for example, was an AME minister, and he filed a lawsuit in South Carolina advocating for his child. In 1951, the NAACP combined Delane's lawsuit with four others, and created one class action lawsuit. This suit made it all the way to the Supreme Court as Brown versus Board of Education. The Brown in Brown versus Board of Education was Oliver Brown, another AME minister. Like Delane, he filed a lawsuit related to school segregation and he did so in the school system in Topeka, Kansas, where his daughter Linda was a student. So the NAACP combined Delane's lawsuit, Brown's lawsuit, and several others, and this became the case that went before the Supreme Court as Brown versus Board of Education. Thurgood Marshall, a future Supreme Court justice, and other lawyers argued that segregation was unconstitutional. In 1954, the Supreme Court unanimously agreed, citing the 14th Amendment. In the Brown v. Board of Education decision, the Supreme Court struck down segregation in public schools. African Americans celebrated this legal victory. Nevertheless, they continued to face enormous challenges. Violence from white supremacists increased after the Brown decision. The murder of Emmett Till in 1955 was one horrific example. Emmett Till was a Chicago teenager who visited his cousin in Mississippi. He was brutally murdered by two white men after he allegedly whistled at one of their wives. Till's mother, Mamie Till, insisted on an open casket funeral. The disturbing images of his disfigured body became a brutal symbol of white violence and a rallying cry for black activists. 
Meanwhile, in Montgomery, Alabama, black patrons worked to end segregation on public buses. The Women's Political Council planned to organize a boycott of these buses, and they looked for someone to launch it, for someone to light the fire. Rosa Parks was an AME, an AME stewardess actually, and she was a veteran civil rights activist. On December 1st, 1955, she was arrested for refusing to give up her seat to a white patron. She became a symbol for the boycott and is also known as the mother of the civil rights movement. The Montgomery bus boycott lasted for over a year. A young Baptist minister named Martin Luther King Jr. led the boycott. So throughout this, African Americans combined their forces and did carpools, walk to work, all to maintain this boycott, which was ultimately successful. In 1956, a federal district court ruled in Browder versus Gale that segregated buses were illegal. The boycott ended and Montgomery buses integrated. Other seminal moments in the civil rights movement occurred throughout the 1950s and 1960s. For example, in 1957, nine African-American students, known as the Little Rock Nine, integrated Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. They were met with tremendous resistance, violence, and threats, but they persisted and integrated that school. In 1960, four Black North Carolina A&T students did a sit-in at Woolworth's store in Greensboro, North Carolina. Activists throughout the country looked at this sit-in strategy and did the same throughout the South, working to integrate lunch counters. In 1961, CORE organized the first Freedom Rides, and you can see on the map the various routes of these different Freedom Rides. Interracial groups of activists rode together, attempting to integrate interstate buses and bus terminal facilities. They faced violence throughout their journeys. Some of these buses were bombed. When the buses stopped, there would be mobs waiting for them, but they persisted in their efforts. In August 1963, the March on Washington occurred. And it was during this event that Dr. Martin Luther King gave his famous I Have a Dream speech. Young activist John Lewis also spoke of the event and gave a powerful speech too. Only a few weeks later, in September of 1963, white supremacists bombed 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. This church had been playing an active role in the movement, and that is why it was targeted. The bombing tragically killed four little girls, Denise McNair, Cynthia Wesley, Addie Mae Collins, and Carol Robertson. In 1964, the Civil Rights Act was passed. This law prohibited discrimination in public places and in employment. The law also created the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, whose job was to investigate and litigate employment discrimination. In 1965, activists organized a march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. The purpose was to advocate for black voting rights. Additionally, the march was intended to commemorate the life of Jimmy Lee Jackson, a SNCC activist who was killed by an Alabama state trooper. On March 7, 1965, also known as Bloody Sunday, John Lewis and Hosea Williams led marchers to the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. They were halted by state troopers who beat them with billy clubs and doused them with tear gas. The marchers were forced to retreat. The images of these peaceful protesters being beaten and bruised 
was a wake-up call for the nation. These images were plastered all over the television and indeed all over the world. The Selma to Montgomery March finally occurred on March 21st, 1965 and lasted for five days. President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act into law later that year. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 prohibited state poll taxes and literacy tests. It also empowered the federal government to closely monitor voter registration to ensure that minorities were not being unfairly excluded. On April 4, 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated at a Memphis hotel. He was there to support black sanitation workers. The black power movement emerged in the 1960s. It developed in part as a reaction to persistent anti-black violence in the North and the South. Stokely Carmichael was a SNCC activist who participated in the Freedom Rides, and he popularized the concept of black power. Black power advocates opposed nonviolence as a strategy and instead promoted self-defense. They also encouraged black people to take pride in their natural beauty and in their African heritage. So in the image here, you can see a beautiful black woman wearing her natural hair and looking at a beautiful piece of African artwork. Malcolm X was one of the most influential leaders of the Black Power Movement. He was a vocal minister for the Nation of Islam, though he later broke with the organization. In his fiery and eloquent speeches, he encouraged Black pride, self-reliance, and self-defense. He was assassinated by members of the Nation of Islam in 1965, but his ideas resonated long after his death. Stokely Carmichael, for example, was influenced by the slain leader's ideas and speeches. And in 1966, he announced the turn away from nonviolence towards black power. In October 1966, Huey Newton and Bobby Seale formed the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense in Oakland, California. The party developed chapters throughout the nation as well. Local police and the FBI worked to undermine this Black Power organization. While the civil rights and Black Power movements were occurring in the United States, African independence movements were occurring on the African continent. Between 1945 and 1960, 40 new African nations emerged. They threw off the colonial governments and took governance into their own hands. Black Africans became the leaders of these new nations. African Americans and those throughout the diaspora were immensely proud of these new African leaders. For example, from 1957 to 1966, Kwame Nkrumah led the newly independent nation of Ghana, which had been a British colony. Nkrumah was a graduate of the great Lincoln University, the same historically black institution that Thurgood Marshall attended. The author of this book, Dr. Dennis C. Dickerson, is also a proud Lincoln graduate. Decolonization did not only occur in Africa, but in various parts of the world, particularly the Middle East and Asia. 